Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stermach, and now we'll unveil the top news of these days. Russia launched more than 40 missiles and about 40 attack drones on Ukraine this night, mostly on objects of critical infrastructure. Some of the rockets and shahads were shut down. However, unfortunately, only a part of them. There was another wild missile attack on Kharkiv and the Kharkiv region. Objects in Kyiv, Zaporizhia, Odessa and Lviv regions were also targeted. All of our European neighbors and other partners see Ukraine's critical need for air defense system. Right now, with our ability to overcome Russian terror, the world can demonstrate that all terror is treated equally as a crime. However, if Russia is allowed to continue doing so, if Russian missiles and Shahid drones continue to strike not only Ukraine, but also the resolve of our allies, this will amount to a global license for terror. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine on Social Network X. Ukraine needs air defense and other defense support not turning a blind eye and long discussions. This morning, as a result of a massive combined attack, Russian missiles and drones damaged Ukr Energa substations and generation facilities in Odessa, Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, Lviv and Kyiv regions. In the Kharkiv region, emergency shutdowns were applied. About 240 southern subscribers were disconnected. Last day, more than 150 energy metering points were restored. As a result of the new shutting, there is damage to power grids and equipment in some areas of the region. In total, 15.5 southern households remain without power. Restoration work is ongoing. In total, 380 settlements were de-energized on the territory of Ukraine. Due to hostilities, there is a blackout in the Vinnytsia, Donetsk, Ivano-Frankivsk, Sumy and Kharkiv regions. As Vladimir Zelensky wrote on Tuesday, the world has no right to remain indifferent at a time when Russia is purposefully destroying the city and killing people in their homes day after day. Ukraine needs more protection of the sky. And today we are already seeing the consequences of the lack of air defense systems, but we hope that we will receive the Patriot system soon, because the European Parliament refused to make a decision on the financing of the Council of EU due to the inability of the EU countries to provide Ukraine with additional Patriot systems. We don't need much, only seven of them. Russia asked Kazakhstan to supply 100,000 tons of gasoline in case of fuel shortage. Reuters writes about this, citing three sources. One of the interlocutors said that the deal has already been agreed upon, and although the Kazakh authorities denied this information, most likely there was such an appeal. After all, strikes by unknown drones disabled more than 15% of Russian oil refining capacities. According to Rostat, gasoline production in Russia by the end of March decreased in annual terms by 14% and diesel fuel by 7%. Due to the risk of a fuel shortage on the domestic market, Russia has sharply increased its purchases of gasoline from Belarus. At the same time, Russian government imposed an embargo on gasoline exports from March 1st for six months. But what we are hearing from Washington right now? Following Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin, who spoke out against Ukraine's attacks on Russian oil refineries, his deputy, Celesty Valenda, made a similar statement. She stated that Russian refineries are civil infrastructure. According to this principle, apparently, the Crimea bridge is a civilian infrastructure because civilians travel across it. Let me remind you that the Russian media called the civilian infrastructure of the hostel near the military plant in Awabuga. In general, any infrastructure can be called civil if desired. Let us recall that Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin recently criticized attacks on Russian refineries. According to him, these attacks could undermine energy stability in the global market. In response to this, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that, in his opinion, Russian refineries are legitimate targets for Ukrainian weapons. At the same time, Kurt Walker, in an interview with RBC Ukraine, expressed the opinion that Ukraine should not only continue to destroy all refineries, but also attack any military infrastructure inside Russia. Especially the one that is used to attack Ukraine. So airfields, logistics points, ammunition depots, all of these military targets. And this is legal. What Ukraine should not do is what Russia is doing. Attack residential buildings, schools, hospitals. Nobody should do this and Russia shouldn't. But Russia is doing this while democratic countries are negotiating about which targets can be hit 
and which cannot. NATO plans to build a ground force headquarters in Finland, which will expand the activities of the Joint Forces Command. This was stated by Norwegian Defense Minister Bjorn Ari Gram, Finnish media report. According to him, the creation of a new NATO Ground Forces Command Center will make it possible to benefit from the membership of all Nordic countries in the alliance. According to the publication, the headquarters will be located in the city of Mikkeli in southern Finland, which is located approximately 100 kilometers from the border with Russia. It is noted that the new command center will be subordinate to the Joint Forces Command in Norfolk, USA. It is known that at least 375 officers from NATO member countries will be sent to work in Mikkeli. In addition, at the end of March this year, Finnish Foreign Minister Elina Valtanen said that the country does not exclude the possibility of sending Western troops to Ukraine in the future, but now this is not necessary. At this stage, no one can say how the war will end. But when it ends, Russia will begin to restore its military potential. Of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on how this plays out in our direction. Janne Jakola, commander of the Finnish Defense Forces. At the same time, Russia will not be able to threaten Finland up until 2030. It doesn't have the soldiers to bring them back to the border. This is reported by Politico. As the publication notes, Putin recently threatened to deploy troops near the country's border with Finland again. This is serious arm rattling, considering that the length of the border is more than 1.37 kilometers. And Finland, of course, now has the protection of its NATO allies, which means that Putin's threat is unlikely to raise any existential concerns, especially since the dictator himself complained that Russia had perfect relations with Finland and now Finland joined NATO. And now there will be troops there. But in fact, the reason is different. The Russian army is so overstretched that just a few months after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Kremlin has already moved its troops stationed near the Finnish border to Ukraine. Although, as usual, they lied that they were transferred as a sign of friendship. And as a former head of Finnish military intelligence, Pekka Toveri said, the Russians will not have the resources to build infrastructure, produce new heavy weapons and attract a significant number of forces to our border by the 2030s. Let me remind you that the president of Finland, Alexander Stubb, considers it unlikely that Russia will attack his country. But at the same time, GPS failures on airplanes have become more frequent in Finland. This is due to Russia's active use of electronic warfare systems in the Baltic region. Therefore, no one can relax, especially for Russia's closest neighbors. That concludes our video for now. Thank you for watching. Stay updated, comment and like our YouTube channel. Stay updated for more news from Ukraine. Your support is that really matters. Goodbye.